Hi, Internet viewers. This is Frank Rauscher again. I uh, finally got around to starting to publish videos again. And on this one, I'm going to be doing a black cap chickadee. And part of, if you were following some of my videos along the way, I had uh, a knee replacement. So I've been a little laxed on in publishing uh, but now I'm back and I'm going to try to get you off and running. Um, we are going to, uh, I'll go through uh, some of the equipment I've used again uh, to create um, the, the black cap chickadee. Uh, and most of the stuff I do is with power, as if you're following me from before on other videos, you, you know that. And uh, I will demonstrate how we go from a block of wood right on through uh, the painting and mounting of it. Uh, part of what I'm going to have available is uh, the what's the name, uh, the pattern for for the black cap chickadee, and this is it right here. Uh, I'm going to try to uh, get you to uh, follow with the pattern. The pattern that I usually make are to scale. And uh, every once in a while, um, I'll scale down uh, certain birds or animals because of the size they are. Uh, I'll reduce it. I usually try to make uh, items, especially birds, uh, to scale, except for the real large ones, and I usually scale them down so you can put it on a shelf or something like that. And this way, it, it accommodates it. When you get something really big, you you get limited to where you can put these. So I want to show you one of the finished black cap chickadees that I've done, and this is the guy right here, and. I'm going to try to show you how to do this one. And uh, I'm also going to show you uh, different things. Uh, what what I've done on this black, ch uh, black kept chickadee is uh, everything turned on this. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me turn this a little bit. Uh, you'll see the tail is going in this direction. Then the body is going in this direction and the head is going through this direction. On the one that I'm going to do, that's part of this pattern that's set up, it, it, we're only going in two directions. And here's where the body and the tail are lined up and then the head is turned. And the reason why we turn the head is because it, it gives it movement. If you did uh, the whole bird straight on, it's easier to carve because whatever you're doing on the right side, you're doing on the left side. When you turn the head, a lot of times, I'll get a blank here and just to show you, uh, here's a, a blank of the, of the black cap chickadee. And if I turn this over, this side here that swings around, even though I cut a lot of the wood off, uh, it's really tight on this side, it's almost right to where it should be. Uh, and when you remove wood, it's minimal. When you get to this side, this corner tends to grow a little bit more and you have to bring us in to match this side. And I'll show you how we get around that. But uh, I always try now, to do it in one piece so that there's no seams that you don't have to cut the head. Years ago, what we used to do is the bird straight on. And then when we got done, we would come in and cut the head off and then turn it. That's another way of doing it too. And and then we had to hide that seam. And, and the way we do it today, uh, I, I don't wanna see a seam. I don't wanna put fillers in. Uh, I want to do everything as one piece, and I try to do that where I can. And uh, one other thing I wanted to show you, too, uh, I have a miniature, and on the series I had done just before this video, 
I showed a lot of the carvings that I have created along the way. And when the virus hit and I stopped teaching and I started creating, this is a miniature, but if you look at it and you look at it from the top, I turned the head 90 degrees from the body. The body's coming straight down and the head is going that way. So it really gives it movement and you can change things along the way. I'm not saying uh, if you're making your own patterns, you can make a pattern like I have, but then you would have to turn the head and you have to cut your blank out accordingly. But in this case, I decided to do it this way. And I've also turned heads 180 degrees where it's like looking back on itself. And that's another way of uh, creating uh, the bird in different positions. And it doesn't have to be straight back. It could be going off on an angle, but more looking to the backside. They can swivel their head somewhat, but they're not like owls. Owls can almost swivel, it seems like, 360 degrees. Uh, with, a, with most birds, it, there's a lip. <laughs> I dropped it. I hope I didn't do too much damage there. Uh, but the idea is to uh, try to, um, yeah, got my head straight, not straightened out because I dropped the piece. Uh, what I want to do is uh, try to show you that there's different ways to the, the ch uh, change the positioning for the bird. And sometimes uh, you, like I said, with, with this other one that I've done, this one here, uh, the the tail is in one direction, the body's in another, and the head's in another. So it's boom, boom, boom. So you you can change things around, and birds are really flexible, and you can do that with a lot of birds. And what I try to do is pick a position different than I've done before. So I'm calling like this chickadee, my chickadee for 2023 where I've, I've had different patterns for different, uh, uh, the same bird, but in different locations, you know, the head and turning of the body. Sometimes uh, like robins, you see where they drop the wing down. And, and most of the time when they're on the ground and they're hunting for worms or something like that, their wings are relaxed and almost touching the ground. And then, like with the chickadee here, these wings are pulled up in here. And then sometimes you can even drop these too if you want. It's not normal, but you can do that. You have capabilities. And these are crisscrossed, these, these wings here. Sometimes you can keep them open a little bit more. It all depends on how you want to develop your bird. Uh, I'm trying to give you one set of ways of doing it, and that's with this pattern here. And, and we're following this right now. But uh, keep that in mind as you start developing yourself, where if you want to change it, you can do that. And, and if you need some help in that direction, you can always contact me and, and we can get together and I can explain uh, how that's done, or maybe I'll do a, a Q&A sometime where I'll show you how to reposition uh, the head or the body uh, just to suit what you'd like to do or have the bird. And, and birds can get into uh, awkward positions. And uh, so uh, that happens. And uh, But uh, we are going to be starting uh, the next video. I'm going to be getting a block of wood. I'm going to show you from my patterns how I work it. Uh, I'll, I'll make a template and then we'll cut that out so you can see how that's done as well. And then we'll proceed on and we'll go with it. Uh, I'm just thinking back. Uh, I did uh the cardinal now i don't know if everybody had seen my cardinal videos it was a very popular uh series that i put out there uh i've done a cardinal in a class i 
wish I could say I have the piece, but I sold it. Uh, it was a cardinal that I turned, just like with the chickadee that turned 90 degree head, I did that with the cardinal. Uh, also, I made the cardinal's body a little fuller because in the winter time they they can fluff up their feathers and they look a little fuller and I had it on a branch and then I had sprinkled some snow not on not only on the cardinal but on the branch and everything else and and had it turn 90 degrees and, and so it really came out as a real nice pose and if I can find some pictures of it I'll show it to you sometime but just keep in mind that uh, we're not fixated on just the pattern that I'm showing you. You can change things. Uh, if anybody wanted to get kits from me or something like that on this project, I have it available. And uh, it's the same way with equipment and stuff like that. Anything that's associated with uh, the carving end of it. Uh, if I can help you out, definitely contact me and uh, we'll get you started on uh, what's what I have. And I make kits on almost every uh, uh, carving that I've done. I've done fish carvings, I, I've done uh, animals and uh, a lot of birds. I've done some ducks as well. And uh, so I do a variety and, and if somebody's looking for a pattern, uh, you can always contact me and I can see if I can accommodate you and uh, or put you on to where you can get some good ones too. And there's some real good books out there, uh, that, uh, the Rosalind Daisy series that's out there is excellent for uh, doing birds and everything else. Similar to what I'm doing, except that it's in a book form with pictures and some instructions. I'm taking you step by step. And if you follow my steps, you'll get pretty close. And the more you do, the better you get. Okay, this some of the things I do, I make it look easy. But as uh, as time goes on, you you will catch on and you will get better at what 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 we do here. And uh, you can become profession, proficient. Yeah, I can't even get the words out. And you can get better at it, you know. And uh, that that's part of uh, practice. It's like an art, you know, if you're drawing or something like that. The more you draw, the better you get and so on. So I just wanted to get you into this and start uh, saying that, okay, the chickadee's coming now and uh, be ready uh, and like I said if anybody's interested in the kits or a blank or a, a pattern just a pattern you want to cut out your own blanks you can do that uh, I usually do make uh, everything in basswood the kits usually contain the eyes the feet the pattern and the basswood blank so uh, if you're in need of any of that or you want to follow along uh, definitely contact me uh, either through um, uh, my uh, comment section of this video or in my uh, email. You can email me and I'll have that in the comments section as well. So uh, I hope you'll enjoy this project as well. It's a fun one. I will start you out from scratch. Uh, on the next video and we will proceed on and just grow with it so uh hope you enjoy this one too uh, we've done quite a few and uh, if anybody's interested in the other ones i've done i have that available as well and uh, i will show you the equipment and uh, what i use and the bits and stuff like that and if you have a dremel or something like that you don't always have to have everything i have uh, you can do it with less, and if some are really proficient, you can do some with knife work, too. It's been a long time since I've done I used to teach, uh, I guess, maybe the first maybe 20 years that I started teaching with knives, and then I switched over to power, and, and I've, I haven't looked back. And just power just uh, allows you to... Uh, 
do more. And a lot of times you, you try to you utilize the grain, the strength of the wood uh, to do your piece. And with power, you can actually go against the grain and it's going to work for you. And you have the control of uh, shaping it without chipping it off and stuff like that. So, uh, again, I uh, hope you'll enjoy it and follow me. And if you do, I would ask you to give me a thumbs up. And also, if you can subscribe to my channel, I'd be great. And if you have friends that are out there that may be interested as well, if you could pass my information on for my uh, YouTube channel, I'd appreciate that as well. And we'll see you on the next video. And we're going to start doing the black cap chickadee. Okay, so we'll see you then. And I hope you enjoy everything. Bye then.